end of the day with your Power Boss Nautilus high dump scrubber sweeper, you're going to want to be able to go to a drain basin, one that's authorized by your facility, and drain the dirty water tank. To do so, grab a hold of the large hose that you find right here, the golden top. It'll have what they call a swage fitting. You can hold it in the up position because it'll have a high uh, head pressure. You can pinch it off like so and simply turn to the counterclockwise position. By doing so, this will allow you then to open up the top and then you can properly drop it into the proper drain. Once again, one that is authorized based on the type of soil that you're picking up from your facility. Once that's down, you can leave it in the down position accordingly. Once you have done that, then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and flush out the dirty water tank. So we're gonna do that next. Once the recovery tank has been completely evacuated, at this point, we wanna go ahead and check inside the recovery tanks for any type of heavy debris that may have accumulated during our scrubbing process. The first thing to do is to take the step and to put it in the upright position so that you can step up and get access into the tanks. Next, you want to undo your straps like so, and then this will give you access to be able to look down into the recovery tank and to be able to examine for any type of heavy debris. If you have heavy debris at this point and you notice that it's in the tank, Take your hose and flush out inside the tanks and try to get as much debris outside uh, of the uh, standard recovery drain hose uh, that we're currently draining in right now. Once again, that has to be an approved drain, very important. Once you've done the best you can there, you should be able to flush it out and take care of it accordingly. But if you get into a situation where there is a very heavy amount of debris within your recovery tank, then we're going to have to go to the second part, and that's to be able to go to our six inch drain clean out area and to be able to flush it out that way. And we'll show you that next. Once you have re drained the recovery tank, we want to put our hoses back and uh, put our step ladder in the back position. And if we have debris in there that we we're unable to get uh, evacuation from, from the standard recovery hose, I'm going to start the machine and hydraulically lift the machine at the up position and then we're going to go ahead and lock out the uh, hydraulics on it with the safety pins. That'll get us access, uh, access to the cleanup port. We're going to demonstrate that right now. First, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my machine on. And then, as you've already known, is that I'm going to take my uh, lift for my squeegee, also lift for my hopper assembly, and I'm going to take two buttons and lift the hydraulics up accordingly. Once we have our squeegee and our hopper assembly in the fully up position, next thing you know we're going to use our uh, lockouts which are on the right and left hand side of the machine as shown here and put them into place to properly lock the machine out for safety. Once we have those both in place, we are now ready to start servicing the hopper assembly. Once you are ready to do a final clean out with your Nautilus HD high dump. At this point, we want to service the hopper assembly. 
If you just noticed right now, we uh, opened up the flat. Now you would have already gone into your uh, uh, dump basin, which could have been a, 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 a dumpster or any type of area where you would release the primary debris and you would have cleaned out uh, or emptied that accordingly. But they're at the end of day cleanup with this in the open position, once again, the, uh, the flap here in the open position, we're going to take our hose and we're going to go up into a proper area. We're going to flush out the inside of this area. Once we have already taken care of the recovery tanks, we're now going to take care of the hopper assembly and flush that out accordingly from this position right here. Okay, if we get to certain locations within the hopper assembly where we got a lot of debris there as well, we're unable to clean it from the directly from where the uh, direct throw is. We have what we call a secondary cleanout port right here, and that is easily removable. This uh, lid assembly is spring loaded uh, with these J clips. You simply open them up, and that will give you then access to the inside of the uh, hopper assembly. And we're going to go now take a look at the detail on the inside. We can flush out everything that needs to be flushed out in here. And if we get up and we look close, you will also see inside here that there is a stainless steel mesh filter. That mesh filter must be cleaned as well with the hose assembly. And uh, if need be, well, I would say at least once a week, go ahead and remove the cotter pin, which is located right there. And then this entire screen assembly will come out and you'll disconnect this hose assembly that's hooked to the end. That's what evacuates the tank. And you'll wanna be able to clean that stainless steel filter assembly uh, with water and make sure that it's completely free of any type of debris. So that should be done about once a week. It can be done in its current position every day. You can do that quickly when you're, when you're flushing the machine out. Make sure that you have this hose back in place and inspect this hose assembly for any types of cracks or wear. And it must be reconnected uh, because this is what evacuates this hopper assembly from any type of water that is accumulated in there uh, while you're in the operating position or scrubbing with the machine. And you can see its connection point right to the right hand side of the screen there. If you have any questions on this, please consult your owner's manual and I'll give you a detail on how to do so accordingly. But this is the secondary portion of how to get access to your hopper and your Nautilus HD right on scrubber sweeper. Once you have flushed out the upper screen assembly, we want to replace our, our door. And before we do that, we want to make sure that the seal on our door is in good shape and it is also clean so we get a good seal. Once that's done, we just take one of our J hooks, drop it into place right here, like so. Release with our thumb the other J hook. Make sure it locks into place, like so. And you're good to go. Once we have cleaned out the dirty water recovery tank and the hopper assembly, if we see that there is a large quantity of debris in there that we can't get it out with the drain hose, then we will go here to the large debris hop out port and that just simply unscrews in the left hand position and gives us immediate access then to the bottom of the drain assembly located right here. At that point we can take the hose and flush out and get all the heavy debris and access that we need to in the recovery tank to get a good proper cleaning of the recovery tank assembly as demonstrated here. Once that's done, we do have a dropout seal right here that should be cleaned and wiped off accordingly and it should be cleaned here and wiped out so that that's dry. And then when we're replacing that, simply screw it into place. But it only should be screwed into place just slightly tight. It doesn't need to be over tight. So just when you get it tight about maybe a quarter inch and that's all that's required. Don't over tighten. Uh, this clean out port. One last item I'd like to cover 
that often gets overlooked is the cleaning of the static strap assembly. This strap is designed uh, as a ground for the machine. You do have two cylindrical brushes that depending on the environment could develop static electricity and then this allows for the dis dissipation of any type of electrical static uh, to the ground uh, taking it away from the machine. So it's important to make sure that we take a, a terry cloth towel or rag clean underneath this uh, after each uh, empty every day and make sure that it's in a good working order and, and good clean shape and once you're done with that you should be good to go. But for a situation ever arises where you need to evacuate the clean water tank or maybe possibly change the chemistry within the clean water tank, that would be done with this brace hose right off to the right. Simply release it from its mounting and once again in a counterclockwise position undo the locking bung and then go ahead and simply drop into a proper drainage basin that re uh, fresh water tank uh, will drain then simply put the bomb back in and in a clockwise position give it a couple turns and once it's snug drop it back into place and you're ready to refill your tank another item that you want to check on is the conditions of the squeegee so you can lift the actual squeegee bar up uh, hydraulically as we've demonstrated. You can lift it up to a height where it's ergonomic for you so you don't have to bend over to put any stress on your body. But you want to check the edges and clean the inside of the squeegee assemblies here. Also check the inner edge that you're not receiving too much wear. If that takes place, you have a toolless change out. You can uh, address your uh, operator's manual on how to do that, but if the toolless change out release the band assembly, and then flip it from end to end, and you can wear this edge here. Once that wears out, you can wear the two edges up here. So you get four squeegee uh, edges with each squeegee that you purchase um, from our parts catalog. And that's simply just put right back together. No tools are required. Next, I'll also pay close attention to the front squeegee assembly to make sure there isn't anything torn here. If something is damaged, you can flip this squeegee one time and that also has a toolless assembly located right here to the right hand side of the operator. Once again, take a look at your uh, operations manual and it will describe how to do that. But you want to make sure your squeegee is in good shape. The next thing that you want to do is you want to check your bogey wheels which are located here. And there will be two of them. The squeegee assembly rides on this. So it's important that these are always clean and in good shape. Uh, they spin and also the wheels spin. And we also have what we call grease fittings located up at the base, otherwise known as a zerk fitting. And you want to be able to go in and get it a good pump of uh, a marine style grease to make sure there's plenty of lubrication and that those will always roll and uh, pivot accordingly uh, as the machine moves to the left and the right, those bogey wheels will turn with the machine. So always make sure that those bogey wheels are in good, good shape. Before lowering your squeegee bar, you always want to check that this donut assembly is in good shape, that it's not worn or torn. That is what seals the vacuum chamber in your hopper assembly and evacuates all the water out of the hopper. So it's important that this is always in good shape. Also, I'm going to turn the camera assembly and I'm going to point it down. And this is where the donut assembly actually attaches to. So Put your finger in there, make sure that there's no debris or any types of clogs within that assembly. Take a terry cloth towel, make sure that's clean so that when the donut matches up with that, it always gets a proper seal and you always get proper evacuation of your hopper assembly. Your Nautilus HD has two counter rotating cylindrical brushes. We certainly want to check those each day to make sure there isn't any type of banding or any type of debris caught up within the, the brush themselves. To do that, simply lift the door. It has a hydraulic arm that'll keep it in the upright position. And then once we do that, we wanna have the head in the lower position, and that will allow us then to open up the side skirts and get us access to the hub assembly on the brush. To do that, I'll just simply turn the machine to the on position.
once the head is lowered to the ground, I turn the machine immediately off. I lift my door assembly like so. And then to remove the main plate assembly for the broom, it's just to simply grab your two hands, lift up, and release like so. It'll give you immediate access to your brush and then simply slide out accordingly. At this point, you want to examine the brush. You want to make sure that number one, that it's not worn out. Uh, you also want to make sure that there's no banding and debris. If there is, you want to remove it. Now this machine has been designed with OEM brushes with a wear indicator. So this little uh, uh, yellow wear indicator will give us a bristle length and let us know that when our bristles get down to this length right here, it is time to order a new set of brushes for the machine. Uh, and that way you'll have them when you need them. So always check that uh, each time that you're doing the maintenance on the machine so you, that you always have a good set of brushes ready to go in case your brushes are worn at that point. Once that's done, tip you slide it back into position, press down, so it locks in the tub like so, and simply replace And it's just that simple. Next, from the operator's compartment, or the right-hand side, if you will, simply open the door assembly, and we want to check our fuel supply. And with the proper tank, it give us an idea of how much uh, fuel we have. In this case, it is an LP machine, but we want to make sure that we've got plenty of uh, fuel available for the next day's operation. Uh, you follow your safety indicator that it relates to your facility. Many times these tanks will need to be stored outside. Uh, in many cases, you want to turn off the fuel flow at the end of the day. That's a very good uh, uh, safety methodology. But follow uh, your safety hygienist rules within each and every facility that you have and just do that accordingly. But make sure that you have plenty of fuel available for your next day's cleaning. Once we have done all of the uh, emptying of the recovery tanks and checking of the squeegee assemblies, uh, it has always been said that a clean machine is a happy machine. So the last thing at the end of the day, uh, with the proper just general cleaner, go ahead and spray down your machine, cover all of the surfaces accordingly, wipe it down. And it's a known fact that a machine that is well maintained is also taken care of and uh, respected accordingly and you get the maximum longevity out of your piece of equipment by just doing the simple cleaning of it every day. Just food for thought.